the jalapeno and cheddar sourdough loaf. This is easily one of the most popular bread in my local bread group. It's also one of my most requested recipes. It's really great. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make it. We're gonna jump right into the mixing process. If you don't know how to get a ripe levan or ripe sourdough starter, I have another video showing you how to do that and I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get to it. My levan has been rising for about three and a half hours. It actually looks pretty ripe at this point and it's time to start the auto leaves. I'm gonna be mixing in the machine today. So we're gonna put in our water. Now the water, I tempt it to 24 degrees Celsius. And the reason is it's pretty cold outside, so I'm using a slightly warmer than room temperature water. Combine that with the friction of the mixer, my final dough temperature should roughly be about 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. That's gonna be the ideal temperature for fermentation. Because it's cold outside, it's colder in my house, I have to use a little bit warmer water. Next is the flour. And we're gonna just mix this until just combined. If you wanted to mix this by hand, I've got a video showing how to mix a Gouda and herb sourdough. The process is very similar here. Because I already did that, let's get this machine mixing. To be very clear, we are also not using the starter right now. This is just flour and, wow, my tripod fell apart. This is just flour and water. This is gonna be the dough cam. This is uh, Alex. If you're watching this, you told me to get this cheap tripod. This is your fault. You're a great photographer, but you sure cheaped out on this tripod. I don't even know how to get it to go in here. Okay, there we go, go cam. I'm gonna switch the camera over here, we'll start mixing. We are currently mixing together the flour and the water. If you were doing this by hand, you would maybe, or you would probably want to put the levain, your ripe starter, into it. The reason is it's just easier to mix it together than to mix it twice, but with a machine like this, this is a spiral mixer. You can see that there is a hook at the back. The bowl spins. This is a really strong gluten developing mixer. So we're just gonna do flour and water. Then later we can easily mix in the levain. While the autolyse happens, we're gonna leave this for probably about 45 minutes. I will wash, cut, and prep the jalapenos as well as cube the cheddar. You can see that the dough is still having some dry bits of flour in there and there's little dry bits around the mixer. The other thing you can do is just wet your hand and take a look along the side here and you can see that it's got quite a bit of dry. So we're gonna scrape that all down and keep mixing this for a few minutes. I keep a pitcher of water beside the mixer with a scraper just to make things easier. Generally, the water is about the same temperature as the water that I've mixed into the dough. I just wanna scrape down the sides of the bowl with the wet scraper. If you use a wet scraper, nothing will stick to it. Just makes your life easier. And I like to actually kind of lift the dough out. Now, sometimes you don't have to do this or if you're patient enough, it'll do it on its own, but this is just a way to sort of speed it up a little bit. And then you can get in and make sure that there's no bits of dry flour in there. So you can see here, we got some flour on the bottom. You can add a touch of water to that if you want, or you can just use the dough to sort of pick it up. Again, if you're patient and you really just let this run, chances are it'll probably grab it, but you know, sometimes I like to get in there. Let this mix up for a second. Got that little chunk there that's gonna bother me. All right, so all we're looking for is that the dough is combined with no dry bits. So if you kind of get in here, you can see there's no dry bits of flour. You can see the dough is like pulling itself off the side of the mixer. It's actually quite strong for just flour, you know, for it's pretty low hydration. This is 70% water to flour. So it would be 700 grams of water for a thousand grams of flour. This is gonna rest. It's gonna develop some extensibility. It's gonna give us a better volume. We're gonna allow this to rest now for about 45 minutes. Now, sometimes I'll go up to an hour, but my starter actually looks ready. So I'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes. At that point, we're gonna mix in the starter. Then we'll mix in the cheese and the jalapenos. In the meantime, I'm gonna clean and prep the jalapenos. Just put a tea towel over this and you can close the lid or leave the lid open. If you leave it open, you won't accidentally turn it on and put the rag into your dough, but I'm pretty sure I won't turn it on. So I like to do it like this, and we will come back, get the cheese and jalapenos prepped, be right back. 
So while we wait for the dough to finish autolizing, I'm gonna cut up the jalapenos. Just wash them, they look great. You can use roasted jalapenos. I like to put them in raw just because it's easier and faster. When you're making two loaves of bread, if you only wanna make a small amount, it's not so much work. But when you're making 16 like we have in the mixer, it's a little bit more work. I do have some pickled jalapenos left over from pizza making and so I've just stuck those in my proofer so that they're not cold because they were in the fridge. Uh, maybe this is about 3% of the total weight. You could raise that up to 10, but I'm just using up what I had. Give a little bit of acidity and crunch to the dough. Well, maybe not crunch wasn't the right word. So to clean the jalapenos first, you know what? I'm gonna grab gloves because last time I did this, my hands were burning. Be right back. All right, that's a little better. The gloves, gotta protect yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice off the top. Try not to waste anything. Little bowl for the scraps and then I'm just going to sort of pull out that core piece and because I kind of like it spicy I'm just gonna slice through it and we're gonna keep the seeds and everything intact here so we end up with something a little bit like this if you have a really big piece of core, you can pop it out. I wouldn't be too worried about that, but up to you. Again, it just depends on how much time you want to spend on this. I'm okay with a little bit of it. Slices like that for me are totally fine. Time to cut the cheese. Little dad joke for you. So I'm using an old cheddar here and we are gonna cube the cheddar. So I like to do a cube that's large enough that you get a good sized chunk in the dough. Now, if you wanted to, you could most certainly definitely grate it and you'll get good results. You can also grate half, cube half, which is even better. But I usually just cube it, honestly, because it's easier and faster. And I think it's nice to have big chunks in your dough at the end. I really believe that if you're making bread with inclusions, it should have a lot of inclusions. You don't wanna get home or you don't wanna buy a loaf or give a loaf or make a loaf, whatever you're doing with it. And it's just kind of a couple little pieces of cheese there, right? So I really pack it in there. And let me just check my recipe. I'm gonna need about 1200 grams of cheese. These are 400 gram packages. One, two, three, oh, I got a little bit more than I probably need. So I'm gonna weigh out 1200 grams of cheese. It's gonna actually put me a little bit over the 35% inclusions with jalapenos, but whatever. Like I said, we want lots of inclusions in here. So let's chop this up. What, what? All right, I'm just gonna double check my inclusions here, my jalapenos, because I don't wanna go too crazy over the top, so I need, hey Google, what's 751 plus 313? The answer is 1,064. I need about 1,064 grams, so that's actually enough. I like to do this in advance. If your cheese is really cold or your jalapenos are cold and they go in the dough, they're gonna bring the temperature down. So I like to pull these out of the fridge a little bit and cut them up, but you could do them the day before, or the morning, whatever you want. Just try not to put cold inclusions into the dough because it kind of shocks the dough. So we're gonna put this away. I'll save these for another, maybe for dinner or whatever. And in about another five minutes, we'll mix our dough and add our inclusions to the dough. All right, it has been almost 45 minutes. Still got some seeds on the table. I've got my cheese ready. My jalapeno pickled jalapeno mixture is ready. The Levin is definitely ready. When you smell it, it's got this really so strong acidic smell and it's just starting to recede, which means I need to get this dough mixed. So we are gonna start by adding the Levin. We're gonna mix the Levin in. After that, we're gonna add the salt. Then we're gonna add the water too. After that, we're gonna 
add the inclusions on first speed. You could also fold the inclusions in, but to be honest, I think it's just easier to deal with it in the mixer and it just saves me a little bit of time, but up to you. With the Leven, all right, refer to my recipe here. This is why I print these out. I need 939 grams of Leven, which is about 15%. So if I do a little bit more, that's also totally fine. And it gives me a buffer now. Remember that these recipes are guidelines. The numbers don't have to be as exact as you might think. If I have an extra 50 grams of Levin and 16 loaves of bread, it's really not gonna make a difference. If you were only making one, that would be a little bit different. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this. Now I have another dough to make. So I've got a little bit of extra Levin. I'm actually gonna make some pizza dough for the family after this, just a hand, hand mix, um, our, our pan pizza dough. I've got another video for that. If you are into pizza, jalapenos go well on a pizza. And I'll leave a link for that in the description below. What was that? Something fell. Oh, the candle holder. My wife is going to be pissed. So if you're watching this video, don't tell my wife that that just happened, please. All right, there's my timer, which is set for my Levin. It is ready to go. So we've got our pitcher of water here with a wet dough scraper. We're just gonna put the starter in. The wet dough scraper really allows you to get everything out. Give that bowl a very good scrape like that. We don't wanna waste anything. I think I made a little bit too much starter. So I'm actually gonna add just a little bit more, maybe bumping this up to about 17 grams of Levin total, just a little handful there. As my father would say, waste not, want not. Now that that's in, I like to set a timer for 20 minutes, which is gonna be a, roughly our total mix time. And I'm gonna use the timer as a guideline to sort of see where I'm at in the mixing process, but by no means am I gonna stick to the timer. Lid down, first speed to start and start to go. This dough has been mixing now for six minutes, six and a half minutes. Uh, I was prepping dinner, which is the beauty of the mixer. You can just let it go. It's time to add our salt. To do so, I'm just gonna open the mixer, put the salt in like that, everything, close the mixer, and now continue mixing. We're gonna let that mix in for three to five minutes, and then we're gonna add the water too. So it's been almost nine minutes of mixing. The salt is in, the Levin is in, and soon we're gonna start to add the water too. You can see the dough is quite strong already. Some signs of that are you've got some ridges here. It's also pulling itself away from the bowl. It doesn't look flat. You can also just kind of wet your hand a bit and give the dough a tug, and you can see that it doesn't quite window or it's not that extensible yet, but we are well on our way. So I'm gonna just close the lid. Sorry for the slam noise there. We're gonna let this mix for a few more minutes and then we'll start to add our water too. Time to start to add the water too. Now, quick tip for you is to check your dough temperature at this point. So my dough is 26.7 degrees. I want the final dough to be about 27, maybe up to 28 degrees. In the summer months, I'd probably lower that to 26 degrees. So what we can do is we can adjust our water temperature to achieve the temperature of the dough we want. If the dough is pretty cold, let's say 23, 24 degrees Celsius, we'd add a bit warmer water. Now my dough is right on point, so I'm gonna use the same temperature of water that I used for the first dough, which was about 24. It's gonna bring the temperature down a little bit, but as we continue to mix, it'll come back up. To do so, we're gonna close the mixer, and we're just gonna splash in a bit of the water. This is 500 grams of my water too, and I'm gonna add it in about three to four additions. Add a bit, let it mix in, add a bit more, let it mix in, and so on and so forth. All right, there you go. So now you can see, the dough is kind of split a little bit, but that's okay. Just let it keep going, it'll come back together. And then we're gonna add the next addition of water. I need like a GoPro to just have on my head to show the mixing, you know? Like uh, Outdoor Boys Loop, making bread in the wild. One of my favorite YouTube channels, The Outdoor Boys. Dream collab, tag Outdoor Boys in the comments if you wanna see me collab with him and make some bread with him. At this point, I'm gonna increase the speed of the mixer just slightly, and I will start to add the next addition of water.
The dough has been mixing for about a total of 17 minutes so far. We did levain, salt, water too, and now we're gonna add our cheddar and jalapeno. To do so, we're just gonna turn the mixer to first speed. We don't wanna crush and pulverize everything in there. I'm gonna dump in the cheese and dump in the jalapenos. See, this is gonna really max out the mixer. Trying to hold the camera with one hand and the jalapenos with the other. I think I got it though. Not too shaky, I guess. Okay, here we go. Jalapenos are going in. And that is a full mixer. Dough is done mixing, it's gonna come out. I'm gonna put it into this bin, but I'm gonna oil it lightly. Now you can buy dough tubs that have lids on them and specific ones, but this is just a bus bin. It's what I've got and it's what I've been using for years. It works, probably should upgrade this at some point, but whatever. I'm gonna lightly oil the sides of the bin so that the dough doesn't stick. You can also, if you want, spray it with water and that also helps. So you can do the both oil and water if you'd like, or just oil. The dough total mixing time was about 20 minutes and we're gonna use wet hands to take it out of the mixer. That's my probe thermometer for my steaks for dinner. Just give me one second, I'll be right back. To take the dough out of the mixer, I'm gonna use this pitcher of water. I'm gonna wet my hands a little bit and I'm just gonna pull it out. So I'm gonna get underneath the dough and sort of pinch it off in the mixer and then throw it into the tub. You can also, if you want, use a dough scraper or a knife, cut it off the side here, but I think it's easier to just pull it out and a well-mixed dough will sort of stick to itself. So you shouldn't really have too many issues getting it out. If you wet your hands, the dough won't really stick to your hands. Now, probably could use a bit more water there, but smells amazing already. Jalapenos, cheddar, gets jalapeno business. This bread will get jalapeno your business. All right. See how it comes out in big chunks like that? This dough total hydration with the Levan is about 79.5%. It's much lower than most of my doughs, but we have a lot of inclusions that are gonna weigh this down and the cheese is gonna kind of melt into the dough when it bakes. And I really like to still have a good oven spring. So I've kept it low. You feel free to adjust that to your liking, but we are just shy of 80%, probably with that little splash I put in the mixer. We probably hit 80%, but if you are mixing this by hand or you want to mix this by hand and you're watching this video, if I haven't already, I'm going to be adding this recipe to my website, but the website will be to make two doughs, so you can check that out. You could also check out my Gouda and Herb Sourdough, and in that video, we spread the dough thin and spread the cheese and roll it back up. Both options work. I just find this much easier in the mixer. Now, there's two things that we need to do after the dough is mixed. One is I'm going to just fold it to bring it together. This is optional, but I've just always done this as a habit just to sort of bring the dough together. Next is we always want to take the temperature so that we can gauge how long our bulk fermentation will be. And this dough is about 26.5. So it's a degree, half a degree colder than I was kind of aiming for, but that's okay. So we're going to give this the full three hours. Like I said, I don't really have the proper setup here. So I'm just going to use this wooden board on top of the dough. I'm going to set a timer for three hours and we're going to bulk from it for about three hours. In that time, we're going to give it two folds after 30 and about 75 minutes. I want to leave an hour and a half before dividing the dough so that it has ample time to relax and rest and allow me to really develop some tension. So I'm going to get this cleaned up, get the mixer cleaned up, and I'll see you in half an hour for fold number one. We are 30 minutes into the bulk fermentation and we're going to give the dough its first fold. It's nice and relaxed. There's lots of bubbles happening all over. We're going to wet our hands. You're going to grab underneath the dough, give it a really good stretch up, and then kind of throw it forward into the bin. So so we're developing lots of tension here. Pick it right up, turn it, and put it back in. If you want, you can give it a little last kind of turn here, but not necessary. That's gonna rest again. This is gonna rest for about 45 minutes or so, and then we're gonna give it its second fold. Put the lid back on, Daddy. timer, and set it aside. Yes, that's a jalapeno spicy. Do you wanna try it? No. Wanna taste it? There is an hour and 35 minutes left in our bulk fermentation, so we're about halfway. We're gonna give this dough its second and final fold. So I've got my water here, wet hands. Give the dough a really good stretch. 
same thing. And we wanna kind of throw it forward. This dough is a little bit tighter because you've already given it one fold. The second fold, we can be a little bit more gentle. Now we wanna let this relax. We're gonna give it the rest of the bulk ferment. So about an hour and 35 minutes, a total of three hours before we divide and shape it. I'm just gonna put a lid on it. We're gonna leave it right here. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're trying to grow. We're trying to hit that 100K mark. We would love to have you as a subscriber. I'll see you in about an hour and a half for the pre-shape. Three hours is up for bulk fermentation. It's time to shape the dough. If you take a close look here, you can see that it's really risen, has a slight doming, and it's got lots of air bubbles and pockets of air. It also has lots of little bits of cheese and jalapeno. It smells awesome. This is gonna be good. So we're gonna shape the dough, and to do that, we're gonna need a dough scraper and a scale. And I'm gonna start by dumping the dough onto the table, and then we're gonna start shaping them up. So we're gonna flip this up. It should come out pretty clean from the container. A couple little bits and pieces is okay, but if you oiled the bin nicely, you can see that this is super clean, no bits of dough, it didn't tear all over. A little bit of cheese in there, we don't wanna waste that. We'll put that back. And you can see in this dough, there's lots of loaded chunks of jalapeno and cheddar, and it already smells spicy. So I'm gonna turn the scale on. I've still got my little dough water container. I'm just gonna wet the top of the scale a little bit, and I'm gonna start to cut, and we're gonna go into 900 gram pieces. I like to try for 900 grams, but if it's not perfect, I won't be too particular. I'll try to get within 20 grams of that. So something like that is okay. There's 890, and that way it's less fuss, and I think that a few grams doesn't really make a difference. There's 890 again. And once you cut a few, you should get pretty close on the rest of them. Should be pretty easy to get them dialed in. Well, that one's a few grams over, whatever. The dough is like super bubbly and alive. There's 12, 13, 14, and we should have 16 here. Now I added a little bit of extra jalapeno and cheese, so I might have a bit of extra dough. Looks like I will, there's 900. And so with this little bit here, I could make a little tiny loaf. I've got some smaller benetones, or I could just chunk this into the bread and everyone that gets bread tomorrow will get a little bit larger loaf. And I don't wanna waste it, so I'm just gonna throw this into these breads. So the raw jalapenos are gonna cook and kinda steam inside the bread, giving it flavor. The pickled jalapenos are gonna give it a little pop of acidity, a little pickled flavor. So now we're gonna pre-shape these by just rounding them into a tight ball, and we're gonna start to line these up on the table. And I'm gonna make a sort of matrix so that they kind of cross into each other, or they it looks like a honeycomb, and then as they relax, they can kinda support each other and hold each other up. At this point, you can see that it, it holds its shape really well. This is a really strong dough. We had a pretty good intensive mix there. So just keep going on. Little pieces of dough or jalapeno pop out, don't worry about it. You can put them on the bottom or put them in later. Just want to develop some surface tension here. So you're gonna use the dough scraper to pull the dough on the table and sort of round it. You're trying to develop a lot of surface tension. So the dough scraper just helps you pull it on the table. And the dough is really well mixed, so it sticks to itself. It helps itself round. Two more. 16 is kind of what fits perfectly in my fridge, so that's what we're doing today. But you you can up or downsize this using the Excel that I mentioned, and you can make however many you want. All right, so once you've got your last one, there's a little bubble there, just pop that out. This is a really super alive dough. Now I'm gonna set a timer for 25 minutes. We're gonna let these rest, give them enough time to just relax on the table. You'll see that they'll sort of start to touch together. After that, we're gonna shape them, get them in banatones, put them in the fridge overnight, and bake them tomorrow. So see you in 25 minutes. Breads are in the banatones. I've dusted them lightly with a combination of rice flour and rye, 50-50 by eye, nothing exact. And that's gonna prevent these doughs from sticking. And then now, because they've rested on the table, I just pick them up and you've got two sort of lobes or two sort of wet parts, half and half. Just stick them together like that and put it in the basket. After this, we're gonna bag them, put them in the fridge, and we're gonna leave these for about 12 hours. It's actually kind of late. It's 10 o'clock, so these will probably go in between 10 and 12 hours from now. Um, it's a little bit later than I'm usually doing this, but shooting a video usually takes longer. So you're gonna bag them up, get them in the fridge, and I'll see you in the morning.
Good morning. It has been over 12 hours and it's time to bake our jalapeno cheddar sourdough. Now, I did say that they'd probably go in the fridge for about 10 hours, but it is quarter to 10. So we're going on 12 hours now. I've got kids. It was a busy morning. It's Sunday, but I've got my coffee. I'm not in a huge rush to bake these, although I do normally like to get the baking done early in the day, especially in the summer when it's hot, but it's pretty cold here in Canada. I just want to get these baked so I can get them out to all the wonderful people waiting for bread and to do that I'm just gonna start to take them out of the fridge and we'll take a look at them now I've got 16 loaves here so what I'll do is 8 and 8 or I guess let's do 9 what do we want to do 8 and 8 or 9 and does that work essentially what you want to do is you want to divide the bake so that you have an even bake in the oven now with the oven I'm gonna use the simply bread oven you can definitely bake two loaves of bread in it if you'd like I prefer to split the bake for a couple reasons. One, the timing will be more accurate. So if you only put two loaves in, you fire the bread pretty quick. The temperature doesn't go down as much, so your bake time will vary from your first to second. The other is I want an even bake across all my loaves, and that's just something I strive for. But if you're starting out, if I'm recipe testing, I can definitely bake one loaf, two loaves, uh, pretty much up to, I would think, about 15. My loaves are quite big, so I will try not to fit 15. You know what, let's go for it. Let's just start with nine here, and then I'll have two, four, six, seven left, which would be three, two, and two. That works for me. These bags that the breads are in, I will just reuse these. This one's a little bit on the cold side. I'm gonna leave this in the fridge. The back of my fridge, actually some of the loaves can tend to freeze. So yeah, this one's got a bit of ice on it. I don't want to bake those first. I should bake the other loaves. And the reason is they just need a little bit more time. So what I'll do is I'll actually pull them all out of the fridge. I'll let them sit, get to room temperature before I bake them. The first ones are gonna take 35 to 40 minutes. In that 35 to 40 minutes, the other ones will kinda come to temp. That is not a normal issue. That is a Matt Duffy fridge issue. If anyone is watching this and you have a recommendation of a better fridge, this one is really quite old, does the job, but I am looking for an upgrade. So I've got three, six, nine. Now, if you take a close look at the bread, when you press into it, it'll spring back, but leave a slight indent. They have visibly risen. They've relaxed a little bit in the banatone, and I'd say these are ready to bake. So I'm going to grab the boards. Now I have my oven downstairs. So from a video point of view, if I'm baking with you, it's easier to do it here. So maybe I'll bring the boards up and we'll set up up here. changed my mind and I've decided I would rather just set it up here. I don't have a good reason for why I changed my mind. I just maybe think it's easier because once you score the bread, you want to put it right into the oven. So by setting up here, it just saves me moving the camera, bringing everything down, bringing the bread, whatever, uh, because I still want to produce awesome bread and I want to bake good bread with you. We are going to lay these out first. And so you could fit four, possibly even five on a tray. I'm going to put two with sort of one in the front to make three just because remember I'm splitting the bake now if I wanted to do a bit less and not make 16 loaves I could have fit them all in the oven at once but I'm really going for it people love this bread and it won't stick around very long it will go super duper fast so let's get these in the oven and you can see I try to spread them out enough the baskets we're gonna place them on top of the oven and that's gonna allow them to dry out and prevent them from molding because mold sucks in the baskets and if you take care of these properly, they'll work for years and years. I'm gonna make sure the steam reservoir is there. I've got everything ready to go. The oven's ready and let's just get these in the oven.
The breads are in. As I mentioned, you want to load them fast. The quicker you load them, the less the drop in temperature you'll have. And now I'm going to add some steam. So this oven has a steam injection here. If you're baking these in a home oven, in a Dutch oven, you can spray steam, add a piece of ice, whatever works for you. Or if you're not in a Dutch oven, you can put some lava rocks in a pan in the bottom. When you pour the boiling water, it's going to steam your oven. So we're going to give this 20 seconds of steam, which seems like a lot, but this oven is so well sealed, nothing will come out. And I want to give these a really good blast to start. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, because this oven has a top heating element, is I want to turn that off and give the, the bread an opportunity to rise to full expansion. We've got our steam in. Now we're going to flip this off and we're going to let this rise. Take a look at our loaves. They've been baking now. I did uh, about 20 minutes with the top element off. Then I turned it back on and it's been about 15 maybe. I actually lost track of time. I didn't set a timer. And they look pretty good. I think we're pretty much done here. I'm gonna give them a few more minutes and then we'll take them all out. Okay, time to take our bread out of the oven. It looks wonderful, smells amazing. Uh, let's get it out and get it upstairs cooling. All right, all of my bread is out. They smell amazing. They look, they look pretty good. Now, admittedly, this is not my best bake ever. And you know what, that's okay. That's part of baking sourdough bread. And you have some ups and downs. By no means are these bad loaves of bread but they're maybe just not the most epic I have ever baked. I noticed last night when I cut them, I had let it go a little further than I usually do in the bulk. And to be honest, that's because I'm trying to shoot a video and share this awesome bread with you. But again, like, I think they're still pretty good. People are gonna enjoy them. I'm gonna get these bagged up. I'm gonna get them out to my community. But first, why don't we cut one open and give it a taste? Bum, 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 bum. Let's give it a taste. Which one? Whoa, I almost dropped one, but I caught it. Let's cut this one looks pretty good. Ba -ba -ba, look at that. And that is still pretty epic. That crumb is pretty beautiful. It's nice and lacy. It's very even. And you can see there's lots of little chunks of cheddar in there. I'm gonna give it a slice and give it a taste. Wonderful, tastes beautiful, nice rich cheddar taste, a bit of pop from the jalapeno. I'm gonna go ahead and get these bagged up so I can get out to my neighbors and I'll see you all in the next video.